Hello everyone, I am Dr. Arti Rapol. I am an infertility and IVF consultant and I work at Sayadri Hospital Pune. Today I am going to talk to you about PCOS or Polycystic Ovary Syndrome. What is PCOS? What are the symptoms of PCOS? What causes PCOS? What are the risks involved in this? And how do we treat? So these are the things which we are going to discuss today. PCOS or Polycystic Ovary Disease in which poly stands for multiple and cyst is small tiny fluid filled sacs which are seen in the ovary and syndrome is a combination of symptoms so this disorder is characterized by multiple tiny fluid filled sacs in their ovary these women come to us with symptoms of irregular periods periods might be coming every one one and a half months sometimes every two to three months and even there are women who get periods only after taking tablets some women present to us with scanty flow some present with heavy flow and also there are women who have frequent cycles the second symptom which is seen here is acne or oily skin they have lot of pimples on their skin and there is excessive hair growth over their body it might be over the face chest abdomen so acne and the unwanted hair growth which is also called as hirsutism are signs of excessive male hormone in their body another important hormone imbalance which is seen in women is hyperinsulinemia or excessive insulin levels in their body about 40 to 80 percent of women having pcos suffer from overweight and obesity issues so when a lady comes to us with irregular cycles and acne not necessarily all women might have polycystic ovaries so we need to diagnose by doing certain tests so we advise them hormone assays which include serum fsh lh prolactin tsh and also some androgen uh, tests which include serum testosterone and dheas we also advise them a certain test to ascertain glucose intolerance which is a glu oral glucose challenge test and serum insulin levels we get their sonography done a pelvic ultrasound is done to check about the ovaries how they look on sonography according to a medical criteria which is called as rotterdam's criteria there have to be two or more symptoms to label a lady having pcos one of them is irregular periods second is clinical or biochemical uh, tests suggesting androgen or male hormone excess clinically they uh, have acne or hirsutism biochemically is uh, the blood test suggests that there is excess of androgen levels and the third is sonographic appearance which shows tiny multiple fluid filled sacs or cysts in their ovary so if a lady has two or more of these three symptoms then she is labeled to have polycystic ovary syndrome when a lady is diagnosed with this condition she often comes to us and says why did i get it what are the causes and what can be done to treat it so there are multiple theories regarding the causes of polycystic ovarian syndrome the two important ones are genetic and environmental genetic it is said that you know studies suggest where there is a genetic predisposition uh, of polycystic ovarian syndrome the first degree relatives of women having pcos have are prone to develop this syndrome second is environmental nowadays in this uh, era we are seeing women are working they have a very busy uh, lifestyle their dietary patterns are very irregular they eat a lot of processed and packaged food there is lack of exercise they have a sedentary lifestyle so all this leads to increase in the weight obesity and this is a major reason why women are more prone to develop polycystic ovarian syndrome so what exactly happens in women having pcos there are two important hormonal disturbances which are seen in them in a normal ovary every month a single egg it grows and it ruptures around the mid cycle and ovulation happens in women having polycystic ovaries since their ovary has multiple tiny follicles all these tiny follicles compete with each other to grow and none of them succeed so there is no ovulation in these women that is the reason why there there is unopposed estrogen when ovulation happens the progesterone is secreted from the ruptured follicle the lack of progesterone makes them 
uh, have irregular periods their periods get delayed and some women we have to give progesterone tablets to induce periods the second important hormonal imbalance is about hyperinsulinemia insulin is a hormone which is very important in our body to digest glucose when we have food the glucose from the food is absorbed and is sent into every cell of our body with the help of insulin in polycystic ovarian syndrome there is enough insulin in the body but there is insulin resistance this condition is similar to the people who have type 2 diabetes mellitus we have enough insulin in our in the body but the body does not recognize it and in an attempt the pancreas starts secreting more and more insulin and this leads to hyperinsulinemia so the cascade of again increasing weight overweight leading to an ovulation increasing male hormones uh, goes on in the ovary so uh, what can be done to treat polycystic ovaries ovarian syndrome is there a permanent cure no basically we need to understand that we have to keep the hormonal imbalance under control and most of the part has to be done by the patient herself rather than any medications or doctor so the most important of them is lifestyle modification treatment also depends upon the lady's uh, concerns whether she wants to go for child bearing or whether she is not interested in child bearing if a young girl comes to us with polycystic ovarian syndrome the first and foremost we tell her he is to change her lifestyle she has to shift to a low carbohydrate high protein diet she has to have regular home cooked meals she has to exercise and this exercise has to be a aerobic exercise aerobic exercise is something which increases your heart rate and respiratory rate and this exercise has to be at least for half an hour per day it is seen that even 5 to 10% of weight reduction causes spontaneous resumption of menstruation and ovulation in women who want child bearing or who are facing problems or infertility when they come to us the main concern what we have is absence of ovulation there might be ovulation but it might be not happening on a regular basis so in these women we give some medicines which induce ovulation we call it is as ovulation induction so initially we do all the work up uh, we do the semen analysis in the men and we also do the testing of their fallopian tubes once everything is okay we put them on ovulation induction drugs we do their follicular monitoring and we advise them to have natural intercourse around the time of ovulation if this fails they might have to go to the next step which is called as iui or intrauterine insemination some women may even fail with iui but in those patients we have to advise them ivf because many women with polycystic ovaries also have problem with their oocyte quality or the egg quality this can be ascertained only after doing ivf so in summary polycystic ovarian syndrome is a very common thing which we see nowadays in our opds but the most of it can be controlled by the patient herself she can avoid the long term risks of developing type 2 diabetes or the developing metabolic syndrome which is a combination of high blood pressure increased lipid levels and increased cardiovascular risk some women might also have increased risks of developing ca endometrium or cancer of the endometrium later in their life so if you keep yourself your weight under control and adopt a healthy lifestyle you can keep your polycystic ovaries under control and you will not face any of these problems you might not even face problems of infertility so whenever you are diagnosed it is better to go and meet a nearby gynecologist take all the tips and there might be certain medications which can be advised to you for regularizing the periods which can include some contraceptive pills as well to control the acne and the hirsutism if you are having so it is better to consult early so that you can take care of it at the earliest thank you